In this video, we'll be taking a look at three college football games happening on October 20th, 2023, and providing you with free team picks and total picks for each one of those games. So two picks for each game, six picks in total. Welcome back to Cash Out Sports. Let's dive right into it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell icon to get notified as soon as these videos get released so that you have more time to plan out your bets as we provide these videos on a daily basis. I can guarantee that you'll have all the important information that you'll need on these three college football games after fully watching this video. One more thing before we start, if you would like to gain access to our best exclusive sports picks to take your journey to the next level, then check out our Patreon in the link down below where we offer our best single picks, parlay picks, and much more. Now let's get started. Duke vs. Florida State The Duke Blue Devils will face the Florida State Seminoles in an Atlantic Coast Conference showdown at Doak S. Campbell Stadium on Saturday night. Duke still has its sights set on an Atlantic Coast Conference title, with just one seven-point loss marring its record. Meanwhile, Florida State expects to contend for the Atlantic Coast Conference title this season, entering this game undefeated, which could be one of their toughest matchups of the year. The Seminoles have historically dominated this series, having not lost to Duke in seven meetings since 2006. Despite the strong pedigree of both programs, this game is expected to be the highlight of the week in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Duke made an impressive start to the season season, securing four decisive victories in a 4-0 run. These wins included a 28-7 victory over Clemson, a 42-7 win against Lafayette, a 38-14 triumph over Northwestern, and a 41-7 victory over UConn. However, Duke faced its first defeat in Game 5, falling to Notre Dame in a 21-14 loss, with quarterback Riley Leonard contributing 134 yards, one touchdown, and one interception in the contest. In their most recent matchup against NC State, the Blue Devils led 17-3 at halftime and went on to win 24-3. With Leonard sidelined due to injury, Henry Boleyn took over, amassing 107 passing yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Jordan Waters added 123 yards with a touchdown, and Jalen Calhoun contributed a 69-yard touchdown catch. On the Seminoles' side, they embarked on a strong start to the season, notching impressive wins despite a couple of close calls along the way. Florida's State defeated LSU 45-24, Southern Miss 66-13, Boston College 31-29, Clemson 31-24, and Virginia Tech 39-17 in their first five games. In the sixth game against Syracuse, Florida State secured a convincing 41-3 victory, with quarterback Jordan Travis throwing for 284 yards and a touchdown, while Lawrence Toffoli led the rushing game with 93 yards and a touchdown, and Keon Coleman caught nine passes for 140 yards. Despite Duke's accomplishments this season, this game will likely highlight that they are not quite prepared to compete at the top of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Injury concerns and depth limitations could prove challenging for the Blue Devils. Even if Leonard plays, the offense relies heavily on its ground game, and limiting his mobility could be detrimental. Against most opponents, Duke could potentially overcome such issues, but Florida State's potent offense and scoring ability make it likely that they will pull ahead early. In their recent matchup against Syracuse, it appears that Florida State had overcome the tendency to underestimate opponents, making it one of their most complete games of the season. Considering Florida State's dominance in this series, having failed to cover just once since 2006, this momentum is likely to continue. While the Duke offense's performance is uncertain with Leonard's status in question, even if he plays, it's challenging to contain Florida State's offense. Florida State has consistently scored over 30 points in every game this season, and while Duke's defense has been effective in the red zone, their inability to secure key stops was evident in their recent game against Notre Dame. Quarterback Jordan Travis has dynamic receivers, particularly in the red zone. Florida State has won the last seven meetings between these two teams, with their latest encounter ending in a 21-point victory. So the Florida State Seminoles to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. With Leonard's status uncertain and Duke's emphasis on running the ball, their offense is likely to struggle, especially against one of the Atlantic Coast Conference's premier defenses and pass rushes. Duke may not generate many big plays or points in this matchup, 
While Florida State's offense has been prolific, the potential for a blowout could result in them easing off the gas pedal as the game progresses. Both defenses are known for their physicality in the trenches, and Florida State's slow starts have also been a concern, which could lead to a lower scoring game. Both defenses have been effective in the red zone all season, and I expect that to continue here. Duke limited their last ranked opponent to a 3-15 conversion rate on third down, while the Florida State defense ranks 16th in the country in opponent third down success. Given the robust pressure exerted by the Seminoles up front, it will be challenging for Duke's freshman, Blevin, to find his rhythm. Even if Leonard plays, his low completion rate could lead to third and long situations against Florida State's defense. Additionally, with the significant number of penalties committed by Florida State this season, a few big plays may get called back. The under has been the outcome in four of their last seven meetings, with one game ending in a push, while Duke has experienced the under in their last two games. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. Michigan vs. Michigan State In a time-honored rivalry, the number two Michigan Wolverines are set to clash with the Michigan State Spartans at Spartan Stadium this Saturday. The Wolverines have not only met but exceeded high expectations, boasting a perfect 4-0 record in conference play and an undefeated 7-0 overall record. They've clinched all their victories in dominating fashion. On the other hand, the Spartans have struggled in conference play, going 0-3, and have dropped their last four games following a promising 2-0 start to the season. If there's a game to spark a turnaround for the Spartans, it's this one. Michigan launched its season with an impressive streak of blowout wins, defeating East Carolina 30-3, UNLV 35-7, Bowling Green 31-6, Rutgers 31-7, Nebraska 45-7, and Minnesota 52-10 in their first six games. Wolverines quarterback J.J. McCarthy showcased his skills, passing for 219 yards and a touchdown while also rushing for two more scores. In their most recent matchup against Indiana, Indiana, Michigan found themselves surprisingly trailing 7-0 after the first quarter but regrouped to secure a convincing 52-7 victory. McCarthy shone again, passing for 222 yards and three touchdowns, with Blake Corum adding 52 rushing yards and two touchdowns. Halston Loveland led the receivers with three catches for 80 yards and a touchdown. On the Spartans' side, they kicked off the season with two wins against Central Michigan and Richmond. However, Michigan State faced difficulties against tougher opponents, suffering losses to Washington, Maryland, and Iowa. In their matchup with Rutgers over the weekend, the Spartans held a 24-6 lead going into the final quarter but were outscored 21-0, ultimately losing 27-24. Redshirt freshman Caden Hauser started at quarterback, finishing with 133 passing yards and two touchdowns. Nathan Carter led the ground game with 52 rushing yards, and Monterey Foster contributed 48 yards with a touchdown on five catches. While the Spartans had the talent to contend with their in-state rivals. The big question is, during which half of the game will they do so? If they manage to keep it close in the first half but falter in the second, covering the spread becomes doubtful, much like the situation the Hoosiers experienced. On the other hand, if Michigan State finds themselves trailing at halftime but refuses to quit in the second half, a backdoor cover remains a possibility. There's no denying that this Michigan team presents a considerable challenge for the Spartans. The Wolverines' defense is exceptional, allowing fewer than a touchdown on average per game. Their defense excels against both the run and pass, making it difficult for opponents to plan an effective game strategy. Even highly talented offenses would struggle against Michigan, and Michigan State is far from an elite offensive team. Despite these challenges, the Spartans' defense is capable of holding its ground. Michigan State ranks third nationally in third down defense, ranks in the top 25 for red zone defense, and stands 33rd nationally in rush yards allowed. Michigan may find it challenging to impose its will on the Spartans' defensive front. If Michigan fails to convert red zone opportunities into touchdowns, Michigan State has a strong chance to cover the spread. The Spartans will come into this matchup with high energy and motivation, so the Michigan State Spartans to cover the spread as underdogs is our full game side pick. As for the total points scored, it's likely that the Spartans and Wolverines will combine for 46 or fewer points in the 116th edition of their rivalry series. Michigan State has struggled offensively for much of the season, particularly
particularly following the departure of head coach Mel Tucker. With Hauser making his second career start as quarterback and expected to play a game manager role against Michigan's elite defense, high scoring plays are unlikely. The Spartans will rely heavily on their ground game to progress down the field. While the Wolverines' offensive performance hasn't been exceptional, they rank in the 70th spot nationally in passing yards, 54th in total yards, and 52nd in red zone offense this season. The Spartans' defense is far from weak, particularly on third down and in the red zone. In this critical rivalry game, both teams will be motivated and energized, leading to a lower scoring affair. Both defenses have proven to be sturdy in the red zone all season, with Duke limiting their last ranked opponent to a 3-15 conversion rate on third down, while the Florida State defense ranks 16th in the country in opponent third down success. Given the robust pressure exerted by the Spartans' defensive front, it will be challenging for Michigan's offense to assert dominance. Even if Leonard plays, his low completion rate could lead to third and long situations against the Spartans' defense. Additionally, with the significant number of penalties committed by Florida State this season, a few big plays may get called back. The under has been the outcome in four of their last seven meetings, with one game ending in a push, while Michigan has experienced the under in their last two games. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. Clemson vs. Miami, Florida The Clemson Tigers are set to make their return to Hard Rock Stadium for the first time since 2015, where they'll face the Miami Hurricanes. Both teams find themselves trailing the Atlantic Coast Conference's leaders by two games in the loss column, and a loss in this matchup could realistically end their hopes of competing in the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship game. The stakes are high as they prepare to kick off this Saturday, and it promises to be an eventful night on the field. Let's take a look at how this game might unfold. Clemson took advantage of a much-needed break last weekend, and they are now re-energized and ready to compete. After starting the season with two Atlantic Coast Conference losses, the Tigers have shown resilience with two consecutive conference victories. They are now aiming for a third win, relying on their suffocating defense. Clemson's defense ranks fifth in the nation, allowing only 261.8 yards per game. Their run defense has been particularly formidable, permitting just 86.3 rushing yards per game, with the remaining 170 5.5 yards coming through the air. In six games, only Duke and Florida State, both ranked opponents, managed to score more than 20 points against the Tigers. Against other teams, Clemson's opponents have typically scored 17 points or fewer. On average, Clemson's defense is conceding only 19 points per game. It's clear that the Tigers remain a force to be reckoned with defensively. On the offensive side, Clemson has put up impressive numbers, but it's essential to recognize that a couple of high-scoring non-conference games are somewhat inflating their statistics. Against Atlantic Coast Conference opponents, the Tigers are averaging 20 points and 394.5 yards per game. Quarterback Cade Klubnik has had a significant impact with 1,370 passing yards, 11 touchdowns, and only two interceptions, marking an improvement in their passing game compared to previous years. In terms of rushing, Clemson has accumulated 1,129 yards with an average of 4.8 yards per carry and 12 rushing touchdowns. Will ship leads the team in carries and yards. While their performance in conference play has room for improvement, the week off might have provided them with the rest and recovery they need. Miami, on the other hand, faced an unexpected loss against Georgia Tech on October 7, marking their first loss of the 2023 season. Last weekend, the Hurricanes suffered a 41-31 defeat to number 10 UNC, making it two consecutive losses. They are now back home on Saturday, hoping to halt their losing streak. Miami will rely on an offense that ranks seventh nationally in yards per game, averaging 501.8 yards. The Hurricanes also rank among the top 15 teams in points per game and passing yards. When it comes to running the ball, Miami is averaging 191 yards per game. Quarterback Tyler Van Dyke has a QBR that ranks ninth nationally, with 16 touchdowns and a 70.5% completion rate. Henry Parrish Jr. is making significant contributions with an average of 6.3 yards per carry. The Hurricanes have scored fewer than 30 points in only one game, and their offense has been instrumental in their success. Defensively, Miami has also shown strength against the run, allowing just 87.7 rushing yards per game, ranking ninth nationally in that category. However, it's essential to consider that their defensive numbers have been influenced by their schedule. In three games against Power 5 opponents, the Hurricanes allowed a total of 9 
97 points, significantly higher than their season average of 19 points. When it comes to defending against passing plays, Miami allows an average of 220.7 passing yards per game and has recorded 16 sacks in six games. While their last Saturday's performance was challenging, considering the quality of the opponent, the upcoming game will test their ability to bounce back. These two teams have had a strong series of games against each other over the years, with Clemson holding a 7-6 edge after winning the last four matchups. This season, both sides have had moments where their potential has shown, but neither has fully lived up to expectations. Last season, Clemson secured a convincing 40-10 victory over the Hurricanes. Both teams have experienced changes at key positions on their offense, which has led to some growing pains, but they have still managed to put up strong offensive numbers this season. With that said, Clemson was ranked in the top 10 entering this season for a reason, and their talent remains intact. Their diverse receiving core is expected to pose challenges for Miami, and this is where the game is likely to be decided, although it's expected to be much closer than last season. The outcome, however, is likely to remain the same, so the Clemson Tigers to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. Both teams have formidable run defenses and strong offensive lines, setting the stage for an intriguing trench battle that may need to be decided through the air. In such a scenario, Clemson is likely to have the upper hand. The return of Williams to their roster is a significant advantage and adds another dimension that Miami will have to focus on defending. If Clemson can open up their passing game, they should be able to find the end zone more consistently than they have in recent matchups. These two teams combined for 50 points in their last meeting, with Clemson contributing 40 of those points. They have scored at least 38 points in their previous four meetings with Miami, and they are expected to carry the bulk of the scoring once again. Over the projected total is our full game total pick. That's all for now, so if you have any other games you would like reviewed, then leave a comment down below with the game you would like analyzed. Subscribe to our channel, leave a like on this video, and we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. We would also love to hear your opinion on the picks presented to you in this video, whether you agree or disagree with them, so leave a comment down below and do let us know.